Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. I'm Chef Christine Cushing, and I'm teaching horrible cooks how to become fearless in the kitchen. Today, a woman who gets a failing grade every time she cooks. Stress is pretty much consistent. <laughs> she goes from bungling spaghetti and meatballs. I make a meatball pancake. To making a meal for 65 hungry students. This rate will have one ravioli. Am I allowed to swear at you? Can she learn to cook cuisine that'll get her an A plus? This is not what we do. Can we figure something else out, please? Or will she end up with an F yet again? If she screws this up, I don't think she'll recover. can skydive, climb mountains, and swim with sharks. But put her in the kitchen, and she's so stressed out, she can't cook a thing. Meet Anya. She's definitely a nervous cook. You have to get out of the kitchen if she's in action. She is like a chicken with her head cut off. I would say I'm a pretty stressed out cook. And that stress leads to many mishaps. Anya figured that barbecue would be a suitable enough place to cook a pie. Yeah, I tried to cook a pie on a barbecue. Of course, the pie got burnt, and nobody could eat it. One of my most awful moments in the kitchen was cooking my first turkey. To our great dismay, the turkey was still half frozen. She left the giblets inside as well, so it was kind of disgusting. It was aimed at being something fantastic and ended up being rather disturbing to the interiors of those that ate. Anya has done many things. She has done skydiving, she's climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, but for whatever reason, she's not as fearless in a kitchen. The number one motivator for me to cook well would be to provide great food for my family and my husband. My job is to get Anya as fearless in the kitchen as she is in the rest of her life. If I can pull that off, she'll turn her culinary fright into dinner party delight. So, this is my kitchen. Okay. What is the process when you're cooking? Is it during the week that there's the most stress? If you're entertaining, uh, stress. Well, stress is pretty much consistent. <laughs> Whether it's during the week or, or uh, if I'm entertaining. So why do you want to learn now? What is different now? I want to be able to entertain. I want to be able to feed our son and my husband in a way that they don't run away from the table. <laughs> yeah. I just want to feel less stressed and confident to do with something that I love, because I love food. Is there something that you've always wanted to learn to cook? I love Italian food. Okay. The whole idea that something doesn't have to be extremely complicated and it can be very simple and beautifully presented. So Anya, what I want to do is I want to get you to that place where you're going to make that beautiful Italian meal for your family and feel the confidence when making it. But in order to get you there, I need to see you first cook by yourself. You need to see me cook. I need to see you cook. Okay. I would like you to make me pasta with meatballs. What? <laughs> okay, off you go. Um, looks like it might be breadcrumbs. I don't even know what that is. Here's a tip, Anya. Dry off your hands before you touch the spices. You'll avoid all that spice sticking to your wet hands. <laughs> I said meatballs, not baseballs. This is where I'm stumped. Having Christine, like, over my shoulder is incredibly intimidating. She's gonna actually be trying this food, and uh, it's terrifying. So you climbed Kilimanjaro? Yeah, I mean, um, screw Kilimanjaro, this is, this is much harder. I'm just quarreling. <laughs> what a mess. Can I make a meatball pancake? You can't say they're not unique. It's all about the presentation, right? You know, maybe somebody would look at that and say, that looks good. Where is this somebody? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where to start. I think I need to order in. Oh, the eggplant is horrible. Kind of tastes like the dinner I cooked last night. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty discouraged, truthfully shocked at my own sort of inability. And I'm wondering if it's possible that I could actually do this meal and do it well, because it, it's not looking that way right now. 
This is not a lovely meal from Rome. De definitely not. Okay. Let's get rid of this. I want you to make a phenomenal Italian meal from scratch. All right. My plan to make Anya a great stress-free cook is simple. I'm gonna take her on a culinary journey and teach her some classic Italian dishes that'll be easy for her to make on her own. First up, spaghettini with meatballs. This is the epitome, really, of a simplistic dish because okay. I'm trying to de-stress the cooking process. So we're actually gonna use sausage meat instead of the ground beef to make our meatballs because there's already all kinds of flavors in this. So a lot of the work is already done for you. We're gonna shape them, put them on this baking tray, and then bake them in the oven. So why don't you put that sucker in the oven, and then let's make our sauce. What is great about the way Christine is teaching me is she's actually showing me shortcuts that help eliminate that stress and actually simplify the information. I love fresh basil and I love fresh Italian parsley. Are you, too, are oh you yeah. keen on that? So let's do a little trick. Take your sharp knife, you give it a little bit of a haircut, like that, just sort of in the air. Okay, this is worth it right here. Isn't that cool? <laughs> really, it's the little simple tricks and tips in the kitchen that can make your life so stress-free. If this is gonna be a nice Italian dish, get those hands in there. Get those hands yeah, in there, yeah, okay. Yeah. Isn't there something therapeutic, though, getting your hands say, in there? I'm loving this. <laughs> Yummy. They look fantastic. So, this is me happy in the kitchen. <laughs> And now let's do a little plating. And you just do this and you twist your plate. What do you think? I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. Doesn't look good. I can't believe that I kind of had something to do with that. Yeah. <laughs> that is sweet. Is that sweet? Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> I like it. Nice and spicy. I was totally thinking that there was no way that I was gonna be able to pull this off, but um, I feel better. I feel like it's possible that I could serve a dish that looks and tastes good, so. Okay, so keep that in mind. Yeah. Are you ready to get out of the kitchen and do something a little more Italian than this? Um, yeah, bring it on. Coming up, Anya has a little fun in an industrial kitchen. I've been wanting to get my hands on your bowl since we started this thing. <laughs> and later, she attempts to put together pasta for starving students. I'm feeling good about it Are now. you? No, not at all, okay. no. Anya's culinary angst sabotages her every effort in the kitchen. I would say I'm a pretty stressed out cook. But she really wants to learn to make fabulous food. I just want to feel less stressed and confident to do with something that I love, because I love food. So I'm showing her some simple but impressive Italian meals. This is going to be a nice Italian dish. Get those hands in there. We started out with a spaghettini with sausage meatballs. That is sweet. And now we're off to work with a true Italian, making pasta from scratch. Hey, Carmine. Oh, yeah. Great to see you. Good to good see you. Good. How are you doing? I'm great, I'm great. This is Anya. Hi, this is the Anya. beautiful Italian. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. You said more, more Italian. <laughs> more Italian. It doesn't get any more Italian than this. We're going to make some fresh pasta today. Excellent. And well, we're just going to have some fun, get our hands dirty, make something, and then eat it after. Is Excellent. that cool? Awesome. Everybody thinks making pasta is really, really difficult. I wanted to show Anya that it's easy. You mix some flour, a couple of eggs, a little bit of salt. 20 minutes, you're done. We're going to start in the center, and we are slowly going to bring all the outside inside. My eggs are getting away from me. Okay, bring it back. You're in control. You have to control the food. Oh, boy. You're doing fine. Then don't be afraid to mix it up now. Can I get my hands in your bowl? Yeah, get your hands I've been in wanting to get my hands in your bowl since you started this thing. <laughs> because of the way he is and the way he got me involved, I felt like my stress level completely went out the window. And we just, we really get into it. We have a lot of fun. Now, pull the dough up. And then we're going to push down with our palm. Right hand control, left hand just twists. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. Now we're going to roll the pasta into sheets. Yeah! So slowly you're making it thinner and thinner. Can you do that with my thighs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Hallelujah. Okay. Very good. Beautiful. Yeah. Now that we've rolled out the sheets, essentially this is kind of like the mother. We can do everything from the sheet. We can make any shape of pasta, but we're going to make ravioli. Anya, pay attention to this. Okay, right. Okay. I want you to border with the egg wash. I've prepared just a little uh, filling. I'm having memories of meatballs, actually. Right. Uh -huh. And you're just going to put this on top. This is great. Right? Wow. The most important part is getting the outside. 
We wanted no air in here whatsoever. There, that's perfect. Look at Take that. Your time. You're doing great. You're the ravioli queen. Now let's make the pappardelle. This is the easiest thing in the world. Just loosely, yeah. Pappardelle is that simple. We're making spaghetti alla guitarra. This is called a guitarra because. Oh, Anya, look at that. Wow. Okay. okay, that is phenomenal. You did a great job. I started this process a complete ball of nerves and working with Christine and with Carmine, I found that I really relaxed and bring it on more. This is the Italian uh, midnight snack. Okay, so Anya, you're gonna need this pappardella for later, so we're gonna take it with us. We're gonna go back home, do a little more cooking, and get you more confident so you can make an Italian meal on your own with, like, I made this. With gusto. With gusto, exactly. Con gusto. Con gusto. Con gusto. Okay, Anya, we're gonna make something that sounds really fancy and complicated, but it's very simple. Sounds good. Okay. Veal saltimbocca, which is essentially veal scallopini and prosciutto prepared in a beautiful marsala mushroom pan sauce. This is a dish that really is about 20 minutes all in. Let's do the veal first. Okay. Quintessential flavors here. You've got a really delicate, tender piece of veal. To contrast that, you have some salty prosciutto and a little bit of sage, which is quite earthy. I'm gonna go easy on the salt because prosciutto, very salty. And what we're gonna do is lay one piece of thin prosciutto on top and then attach a sage leaf with a toothpick. Okay. Now we're gonna take it and pan fry it. Because this veal scallopini is quite thin, it's not gonna take a long time at all to cook. Just about a minute on either side. Look at that. Yeah. Looking pretty good. That's it. We're gonna take it off. And now here in the pan are all these drippings that we're gonna keep, okay? And that's what we're gonna pan fry our mushrooms in. With oyster mushrooms, you just tear them by hand like oh, this. Oh, okay. Okay, so tear those guys. So you actually don't chop these? No, you don't chop these. I mean, you can, but it's better when you tear them apart and you feel how that yeah. feels in your hand. Yeah. I like to add the mushrooms when it's nice and hot, mm -hmm. because then we keep getting that color and we're not just going to steam them. Yeah. All right, so put those guys in. All together at the same yeah. time? Yeah, throw them all in. And we're going to season as we go. Hit us with your garlic. You decide oh, how much. I love garlic. Marsala. A little fortified wine, didn't hurt anybody. Oh, wow. It's hard to believe that this is the same woman who made me that train wreck spaghetti. Look at her, stirring, confident. She is impressing the heck out of me right now. Just lay it in there for a couple of seconds, and that's just to heat it through. That's all we're trying to do at this point. That looks like a picture right there. You think it looks good? Just wait till we taste it. Coming up, I take Anya back to high school for a major culinary challenge. But 90 minutes? Yes, so food's on the table. We can't use this. And later, will she succeed in her attempt to make a meal for her family? I'll tell her exactly how the food tasted today. Anya's family knows that she's not a good cook. She doesn't always do a great job, and I don't have the heart to tell her. But she really wants to make meals that are joyful from stovetop to tabletop. This is me happy in the kitchen. I showed her how to make scrumptious spaghettini and meatballs. I feel like it's possible that I could serve a dish that looks and tastes good. We had a lot of fun making authentic pasta. Making it thinner and thinner. Can you do that with my thighs? <laughs> and now we're cooking an Italian classic, veal saltimbocca. It's a nice visual balance. OK, so what do you say we taste? The prosciutto really does something to kind of intensify and bring everybody together. Yeah. I really, really like it. If I looked at that on, on someone else's dinner table, I would say they've probably been doing it all afternoon. So the fact that it was so simple just makes me feel like oh, that's my little secret, right? I totally. At this point, I'm, I'm feeling very proud, even though I know Christine's been helping me the whole way, but it, it looks beautiful. And, uh, I can say that I'd be proud to serve that to my family. What's gonna happen next is really gonna determine what you're made of. No pressure. Right. You gotta stay zen. Are you ready? I'm ready. We're getting out of the kitchen. Uh, what? Anya's done pretty well with the basics, but now it's time for the advanced class. I'm taking her back to her high school, where she's gonna have to make handmade ravioli for 65 international boarding students. I guess you figured out where you are. Yeah, I know where I am. Okay, this is Branksome Hall, where you went to high school. That's right. You've got two and a half hours. You will be making handmade ravioli for 65 of the border students <laughs> in here. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh, my God. This is some cruel joke. Can I quit now? <laughs> no, no quitting now. And there are actually 65 girls going to be eating my ravioli. Yes. OK. Hey, Divin. Hey, Crystal. How are you? Good to very see you. Good, this is good. Anya. Nice Hi. Anya. This is Hi, Anya. Very nice to meet you. Hall. Very nice to meet you. Welcome back to Branksome Hall. Thank you. Thank you. Um, tonight, 
We're gonna be making some beef ravioli. Dinner service is promptly at six. Okay. I'm gonna keep an eye on you, make sure that we're on time and that we're up to the standards of Branksome Hall. All right. Okay. Just hands over the reins to me and says go and walks away. I'm just realizing I'm on my own and I'm, once again, I'm terrified. Anya, you are now gonna be channeling Carmen. Channeling Carmen. Yes. We're making beef ravioli just like we did with him, but we have to make a whole lot more. A little well in the center. Break your three eggs. Making handmade ravioli from scratch for this many people is a pretty massive task. We got a lot of work and not a lot of time to do it in. Okay, this is me getting some more now. This rate will have one ravioli okay, done at okay. six o'clock. Smarty pants. One Son, ravioli. Am I allowed to swear at you? You can do whatever you like. My romantic notion of making this dough by hand is falling by the wayside. It's taking way too long, so I'm gonna bring in the food processor. Well, that idea backfired. The food processor dough is way too tough. This one feels like, like rocks. Yeah. That batch is done. We gotta make the other two batches by hand because we don't have enough time or enough ingredients to mess up another batch. David, are you happy to have me here? I'd be even happier if I saw ravioli sheets starting to happen. Well, they're starting. Excellent. I'm told I'm, they have to rest. I'm very excited yeah, for you. Yeah, we're starting. I'm feeling good about it. Are you? No, not at You're all. You're lying, okay. No. We still have a lot to do. Now we've made the pasta, but we need to still roll it out, pipe, fill, cook, serve. The most work is still ahead of us, okay? Because we had to toss the batch of dough from the food processor, we now have to make three quarters of this dough stretch out of it. 90 minutes to service, please. 90 minutes to service, holy cow. But 90 minutes? Yes, the food's on the table. We gotta take it up to the next level, okay. as in speed, speed, speed. Now, Anya, we need to be sure we stretch out this dough. Don't forget the way we did it with Carmine, nice and thin. So I stepped away to work on the sauce and I've come back to see that Anya hasn't been stretching the dough nearly enough. This makes the ravioli really thick and chewy. This is a big problem because the perfect ravioli is all about two layers, perfectly connected with a lovely filling. You don't want to have a hard, chunky piece of pasta. Christine, just one second, please. This is not what we do. It's gonna be like a dough ball. Figure something else out, please. All right, well, we just got told those ones, bye-bye. For our last batch of ravioli, Anya didn't roll the dough thinly enough, and the chef here at Branksome Hall doesn't want to serve it. They really have a high standard here, so those ravioli just got the hook. I hope Anya and I are not next. I'll eat those. Okay, you and I can eat those. Chef doesn't want us to serve those to the girls. Chef doesn't want us to serve those to the girls. I started to take it personally. I felt this pressure and this tension, because there is this hard stop in terms of time, and the vibe, it was like a storm moved in and it started raining. I'm thinking making them a little bit larger, stuffing them with more filling, and serving fewer ravioli per person. Now they're looking great. These are perfect. We got 12 minutes to lift off. These will take about three minutes in the water. Okay. And then we're gonna get it out. A little bit of sauce. Right. It's after six. We have to go, please. Oh, we're you. on it. We're, we're on, on it. it. A little bit of fresh basil. Look at that. Here we come. Voila. Okay, girls. Dinner is served. Come on up. Do you like it? Yeah, I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good. I love the cheese and the tomato. Yeah, I this like cheese too. That's it more. Yeah. Before you know it, the whole cafeteria is eating and it's done. And I'm thinking, I did it. Thank you, Anya. Anya's really tough on herself, but I know when she looks back on this day, she's going to feel a real sense of pride. Up next for her, she's going to go back home and make a beautiful Italian dinner for her family. Now, wasn't that great? That yeah, was great. Anya, I'm so proud of that performance, making that pasta for 65 people. Now that you know how to do that and you've done it for so many, cooking for your family, I think is gonna be way easier. Okay. So you're gonna use the pappardelle that we made with Carmine. Yes. You're gonna make a mushroom ragu, similar to the one we made with the veal, and you're gonna turn that veal into an involtini. Now I know this sounds really complicated, but in fact, it's really simple. Those are the best kind of Italian dishes. My nerves pop a little bit because my training wheels are coming off again. This is your pancetta? Yes. And That'll add a little saltiness, so I'm not gonna oversalt. See? Right. Look, come so right away. You see that you knew that? How did you know that? Uh, because Auntie it's Christine told there. me that. <laughs> All right. 
This is feeling slightly easier than the ravioli experience. Deglazing? Oh, deglazing. Hit it. Hit it? Girl, oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> As soon as I see my family, right away I can feel the heat. If it's anything like the turkey she used to make, I don't want to. I don't want to try it. Hopefully it's good, and we don't have to say anything bad. I'll be honest. You will be honest. I will tell her exactly how the food tasted today. If she screws this up, uh, I don't think she'll recover. It's like subtle, sensual, soft. Yeah, it's. Uh, uh, you're not describing your girlfriend, are you? <laughs> there is not enough of it. It's so good. So I will be asking for more sauce. So the only thing that is missing is superior red wine. But I'll settle for white. I think you did a fabulous job, honey. Definitely nine out of ten. Anya was so stressed in the kitchen that she couldn't have any fun. It's great to finally see her relax, open up, and enjoy cooking. I know that from now on, she's going to be fearless and have a great time in the kitchen. It became obvious to me that I can cook a meal for my husband and not get so stressed. Just enjoy the outcome and enjoy the whole experience a lot more than I have in the past. You've done a fabulous job. Thank you. Do the next one like this. Thank you. Visit myviva.ca slash fearlessinthekitchen 